Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today, after doing my cordage on the 10 C's of Dave Ganaferi, and I talked about doing knots, and I had several people that said, go ahead and do the knots. I'm not good at knots. So, this may be a fairly long video, just saying, because I'm going to go in depth a little bit and we're going to talk about it. Now, the first thing we're going to deal with is not going to be the five knots. And this is probably going to be a two-part series. There's going to be five knots and then five more knots a little later, more advanced. But right now, what we're going to talk about is for those guys that are just starting out or you just don't have the skill level yet, okay, here's how we're going to do this. Now, I've already showed in my 10 C's about how I carry my cordage in my haversack. So we got that covered. Now let's talk about whenever we're cut when we're doing this. I had mentioned about doing donut. Okay. So as a addition at the end of this video, hang loose. And I'm gonna show you how to do the donut. And I'm gonna show you how to daisy chain. Okay. But for right now, let's get started. The first knot we're gonna talk about, and you already know a knot. If you know how to tie your shoes. You already know how to tie a bow knot. Now, the knot you tie your shoes with is how most people know that, but it's a bow knot. And it's meant to be a quick connect, quick disconnect type of knot. To secure the, the top of a bag, like a, a sack of flour or something like that, just pull it around and tie that bow knot. That way you grab it and pull and it just comes off. So you already know that knot, okay? But there's a little trick to it to make it a little bit better. So we're gonna start with that one right now. Okay, I'm gonna take this piece of nice bright cord that you can easily see. Just like that, and I'm gonna unhank it right quick. Now, for you to do your standard bow knot, you come around, you cross one over the other one, you come underneath, and then you pull it. This is a cinch. This is not a knot, but it's a binding. Then you make a loop, you make another loop, and you cross those one over the other and pull it. And thus you have the knot like you tie your shoes with. Okay, you've got this knot like you tie your shoes with, and I tie my boots this way, but what I do is I take a little bit more and I make these loops bigger, okay? Now take and do them again, like that. That don't come undone easily, because in essence, what I've made right here is a square knot. We're gonna get to the square knot in a minute. That's gonna be my very first one. But when you're wearing your boots and you've got laces like this, Go ahead and do this. Make it long enough so that whenever I cross and do like that, I form a square knot. Now this does not come undone. If something grabs and hooks the loop as I walk through stuff, this doesn't untie the boot easy. So this is a boot knot, okay? And these can be folded over and stuck down on the side of the boot, back inside beside your sock to keep them from hanging on stuff. That's the way I carry it. So as a bonus, that is the bow knot that you already know. Okay, knot number one, the square knot. The square knot is a basic knot that's used to secure gear in place that will not come apart, easy, to come undone easily, yet will be easy for you to untie even whenever it gets wet. And I'll show you that in a second. We come around whatever it is we're trying to secure. We take and cross, take left over right, come underneath, pull it down form that cinch. Now, I want to go take it and I want to take, this is now the right, this is the left, I want to take the right, go over left, and go up in the hole. Pull it. That is a square knot. Now let me zoom you in close. I want to explain what we're looking at. Okay. The line is coming in, they have crossed over, and then they're going to come up. Now what this is in essence is this is a loop that comes through, goes over, around, and back out, 
and this line is a loop that goes through up and out and back out you know you have tied this knot correctly because you see the line coming out and the line going in are laying side and side with each other same thing on this way they are laying side and side with each other okay when this is a free hanging knot we call it a sheep's bend but right here when you're tying it to something that's a square knot now the advantage to this is even though you pull it good and tight and this gets wet it swells up or whatever to untie the knot all you gotta do is grab either one of the ends and yank and it breaks the knot see how it rolled then the tension is lost and you can easily untie it so if now you just saw me do that we're going to go just like this we now have pulled it tight it was left over right pull it tight now right over left and go back through and you'll know you're correct see how these two are together and that two together. If you go incorrectly, like this, see this is not laying correct. This is underneath, and there that is on top. This is a granny knot and does not hold any load. You can just sit and work it, and it will come undone. They're actually just bound together. They're not bit into each other. This is a granny knot. This reason most people get confused saying they're trying to tie a square knot and it don't work. They actually tie what's called a granny knot. Granny would tie the sack of flour together with this right quick because it was so easy to just wiggle it and it'd fall off. So, again, to have tied it correctly, you pull it and then you want to go right over left and pull. The two cords should be together. That is a square knot. The square knot is used for quick securing of gear. So I'm going to tie this piece of gear to the handle of my rucksack, or I'm going to tie this thing in my car so it doesn't fall around. I'm going to tie this to this tree or whatever. I'm going to take these devices and pull them together, tie them tight, and have a knot I can untie. Now this is the whole thing of knots. There are knots that are easily tied and untied and there are knots that are extremely secure but are very difficult to untie they are in fact so to speak what my granddad used to call a cut knot there are some knots with certain rope combinations that when you tore that puppy down and it ah, man it's rock solid but you got to have a tool to pick it apart because you'll never get your fingers to pull it apart and so therefore, you just got to cut it to get it off of there because it's pulled down so tight, especially if a rope's been put under a great deal of load, like you're trying to hook a rope to, to another vehicle to pull your car out with. Under that kind of power of pulling it that tight, that knot will draw down so tight you can't pick it apart by hand. So you want to use a knot that I can undo by mechanical advantage. And the square knot, as you saw, if I yank against it, the two cords come out and they're side by side. If I yank either one of them against it, the knot unlocks, and I can take it off easy. So that's the very first knot that we're going to talk about is a square knot because it locks securely, and yet I can untie it easily. Okay, that's number one. Okay, knot number two, Canadian Jam Knot. Now you've seen me use this knot many times. And it's one of my favorite go-to in my bushcraft zip ties are Canadian jam knots. This is one of the most useful knots, if not the most useful knot to me in woodscraft. is a way to secure gear quickly, hold it in place where I can pull it and let go. It's there. I can add additional security, and we're going to cover that in a minute. Or I can simply leave it in place and be able to recover my cordage. Because I talked about that in cordage of creating bushcraft zip ties and then when I get to camp I want to secure to this tree my pack well I pull out one of these pull it around the tree pull it tight and I let go we'll show that in just a second as far as securing and I also need to be able to reclaim that cordage I grab the lock knot and I'll explain that in detail in a minute and I pull and it just lets go and now I can retrieve my cordage so the same piece of cord can be used over and over and over and over again for this job without me having to cut cordage every time I want to put something together. It's the most useful knot, but I can also add a little extra security to it as well. 
Now the Canadian jam knot works the best if you're going to recover it in something like paracord or something equivalent. If you tr use a Canadian jam knot in tarred bank line, like number 36 bank line, it will bite down so tight it's very, very difficult to untie. So when I'm building something that I want to stay and last, let's say I'm going to lash together a table out here at this camp that I'll be coming back to, I will use bank line for that because when I pull it down tight, I'm not even going to put the lock knot, the key knot on there. I'm just going to put the lock knot on it so that when I pull it down tight and I cut off the tab close, it's there. When the wood rots away, it's sacrificable. See, at that point, then that cord's not going to be recovered because it's so difficult to recover it with it. It does cinch down that tight. Okay? Now let me show you the Canadian jam knot. Okay, for this we're going to use a length of cord, and I like that pink because you can see it. Now, you've got your odd length piece of paracord you've either cut for this purpose, or it's coming out of another project where I'm salvaging it. Okay? Notice how the outer covering and then the inner strands. Okay? What I want to do is grip one end tightly, and I want to grip pinch it with my finger and thumb and I want to pull it. Don't pull it fast because you'll burn yourself. You'll friction and burn, but just pull it. And that kind of stretches everything and pulls it tight. Now you remember the old Chinese finger puzzles when you were a kid? How that sheath pull? That's what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting the sheath on this to go ahead and stretch and lock down tight. So I'll pull it from one direction and I'll pull it from the other one. Now here on this end now that I've stretched the cord I'm going to tie a good size knot right there. The first knot is the key knot, okay? And it's just a simple overhand knot like that. I will pinch my fingernails and pull it tight. And for show, I'm going to do a second simple overhand knot, just like that. And I'm going to pull it tight. Now that has made the key. Now I'm going to move down a space. It doesn't have to be far, but it does. I like to do it like an inch, inch and a half. I'm going to go around my finger, push it through the hole, pull that down tight, and that is going to be the lock knot. I can double knot this as well if I want to, and in this case, I'm going to. Pull those two knots so they're up tight against each other, and then pull them so they lock together. Now that is the lock knot, that's the key knot. On the other end of the cord, you can simply put a knot, or you can tie a small bowline like I talked about. For the purposes of this, we're just going to tie a knot. This will keep it from unfraying. Because if you don't burn the end or do something with it, it will unfray. So now, I have my length of cord ready to do the Canadian jam knot. Now let me set up on the pole, and I'll show you how we're going to use it. Okay, I'm going to take my hammock. I'm going to use my Canadian jam knot. Now let's say whatever this is, I wanted to secure it to this pole. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take where I have the key knot and the lock knot. I'm going to go behind the lock knot going toward the end, the long end. And I'm simply going to make a loop. Just like this. Wrap it around. Okay, I've got my key knot. I've got my lock knot. I'm going to go below the lock knot and I'm going to wrap it around my finger. Pull my finger out. It's going to leave that loop. And I'm going to take the key knot and stick it through that hole. Just like that. Okay. That has made a loop. Now I'm going to come up to my tree and put my target up there. And I'm going to go around the tree. Go back through that loop I just made, just like that. And then I'm going to just hold on to this running end, the other the long end. Now I'm going to pull back and forth like this. Now you see how it cinches that up? The harder I pull, the tighter that's going to get. I can now just let go. It's there. Let me make sure it's focused down good on that so you can see it clearly. 
Now what is happening is, here's the key knot. That lock knot has slid down until it's butted up against and can't go into the loop I created. So now it's like a log jam holding. It's too big to force through that hole and it's tight. By pulling this, I can pull it as tight as I want and then just let go. It is now hooked to it and will not come loose under its own within reason, of course. Now, if I want to add just a little bit, I'm going to make this to be something like I'm lashing together a, a, a bed for the night. I've hooked this. This is a pole or something I'm hooking to the trees I'm securing. And I want this to be load-bearing and absolutely not come loose. Well, then what I'm going to do is take the rest of this line, and I'm just going to do like a simple half hitch between it and the lock knot. Just pull it like that. That's all i got to do. Now, it can't, if that lock knot magically somehow did work its way under there, there's a second lock knot, remember? I tied two. So it's got to go through, and then that's got to suck in. There is no slack to pull it up. It's there. Now I want to take this down. I'm done. I want to reclaim my cordage. I just pull that loop off. And see, so this is good and tight. It'll hang there all by itself. I grab that lock knot and I pull, and it unlocks it and it just falls off the tree, just like that. Now all I got to do is just flip it over, spread it apart with my fingernails a little bit, and make that loop that choke loop bigger and out comes the knot and I've reclaimed my cordage now let me show you a little detail okay now when I go around my finger okay and then I go through it. Okay, remember on that square knot how those two ends laid together? When I come around the tree, or whatever I'm doing, and I push the running end through, I want it laying beside, see here's the, the make sure it's going to focus, hold on a minute. I want it laying beside that. I don't want it twisted anyway. So that when they pulls together, these two are sliding side by side as I constrict it. See? And so then this loop that I first made will be drawn down tighter and tighter as it's pulled in until this lock knot slides down. And when it slides down, it locks it in place and it can't come undone. The Canadian Jam Knot is the quickest one for me to set up. Once I have the length made up with my two knots and my other end secured, it's just throw it around, wrap it around your finger, make the loop, throw the other, the running end around, pass it through that loop, and pull. That's all you got to know. It locks it. Pull it till it's tight, and you're good. If you need a this has got to hold me up and it just don't take the running in and just make a loop and walk that loop up there against it so it becomes even bigger jam it can't pull in there's no way it's going to come loose it's got to be cut to get it to come loose whereas now i can grab that key knot and pull it and the whole thing just lets go you're making a mechanical knot that the two pull in and then this this can't go through that little hole period. It's stuck. It can't pull it, and the tighter you pull, the more pressure it gets where the cord is trying to force it through that obstruction, and it can't do it. Two knots, it ain't doing it. Okay? Only if the cord breaks, and that's the only thing. So with strong cord, I've got something that's load-bearing. So with my little Canadian jam knot, I can hold up a great deal. So I hope that answers the question of the Canadian jam knot. So we've got you already know the, the you already know the uh, bow knot. You know now the square knot. Now you know the Canadian jam knot. So that's three. You got two more to go. The next one we're going to talk about is the half hitch. Half hitches are used to secure a line, or like I've got a, a line coming from a tarp going to a tent stake and coming back up. It's way to tension the two of it. 
what I'm doing is creating a cord that is wrapped around in a constrictor so that when I pull it tight, the grip of the constrictor is gripping the main body line and not wanting to slide, but can slide in a got to. Now let me explain that. I usually tie my guy lines with this knot. It's super simple. It's just a series of three half hitches. And what's doing is I pull the line tight. And I'm going to show that in just a minute. And then I'm going to create and then snug it up. Should a major storm come up and something just is battering, you know, where the tarp would rip rather than this will slip a little and will give a little slack. It'll act a little bit like a shock absorber where under a sudden shock, like sudden wind slamming into it, it would slip just a little and therefore allow me a little bit of time to make some adjustments before my tarp is destroyed. I live down here in the south where we can have just very intense storms roll up in just a blink of an eye it seems like. And so you'll have a tarp set up and life's beautiful and then the storm will roll in and it's dumping three inches per rain per hour and we got 50, 60, 70 mile even hurricane force winds. It only lasts 30, 40 minutes. But while it's doing that you are being hammered and your tarps will tear because they're hooked from the grommet to the ground and if that rope doesn't give a little bit when that big wham of all that wind and rain hits it will tear out the grommet and your tarp tears. It's, it's not a guarantee this system is going to work but from my experience this is the way to do it to rig up a tarp or some other line that if it was life and death it will give a little rather than breaking. Okay, so let me rig up right quick, and we're going to show you how to do a taut hitch, and that's what it's for, tensioning. It's a taut hitch. I'm pulling something taut with this, okay? Okay, now I've got my line already secured to something over here, and we'll talk about how to secure next, but I've got it hooked to it. Now I'm going to take it and go to this other tree over here just out of frame right here. And I'm going to go around it, okay? So I've looped around. And I'm going to come back to where I want my adjustable tension to be. Now when I'm setting up a tarp, I typically will put this about halfway up the line. I don't want it all the way down at the stake, and I don't want it all up here because I want adjustment capability. This is also a quick way to grab and slide it. So like I said in that storm, if you realize my tarp's about to be destroyed, I'm going to get wet anyway. I have a chance to grab these lines and slack it and give my tarp some space, so to speak, to keep it from breaking. I can quickly adjust this tighter or looser, okay? So I've made the loop. I'm going to come up here to my line and I'm simply going to go over the top of the line, okay? This has created a pocket right here, a loop. I'm going to come back in that loop and come back toward me. This is called a half hitch. That's one half hitch. Now I'm going to put a little snug and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go under it just like this and I'm going to go, I made a loop, I'm going to go under and I'm going to come up through that loop. I'm going to pull it down to the first one. That is my second loop and that's produced a lark's head on it. Now I'm going to do that again. Make a loop. I'm going to come through that loop just like that and I'm going to pull it down. That's three loops. Now in this original I'm going to jump into it and I'm going to go through. Here's my line. Okay. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to go through the top line. This is the line that's going to be pulling tension. This is the line that's going from my, say, my tent stake to the tarp. This is the line coming in. This is when I've timed the loop. So this line is tied to this line. Now I've got three loops. I'm going to go over the top out here and come back through. I'm going to make a loop and going to come through that loop. I'm going to retie this up close in a second. See that big knot loop I left? Now I grab 
the baseline and I'm going to grab my knot and pull in opposite direction and that will lock. What that is I've created a constrictor knot that now when I pull it apart now it's gripping tighter and so it's holding the baseline and not letting it come out. By leaving this loop I've got a quick disconnect. I can grab my running end and pull and that unlocks it. Now it makes it easier. There's no knots there, it's just binds. You know, it's where I've pushed it over. So now let me untie this and I'll bring you in close and show you up close the knot. Okay, here's my line going from my tarp to my stake. Here's where I've looped around that stake and I've come back. I pull it up snug. I'm gonna come up here and pinch both lines together. I'm now just gonna go over the top. It forms this loop right here, see? I'm gonna go through that loop. Pull it all the, the line all the way through. Pull it down snug. Now I'm going to do it again. See this loop right here? I'm going to go through that. Pull it all the way through there. Okay, that's two. Pull it down snug. Now we're going to do it again. Come up. Go underneath. Come into that pocket. That's three loops. Okay. Now, wiggle it, make sure it's tight. Now, go back to this window. Come over the top. Come back through so that it goes into this loop I just made. So I've spread this out. I take it. I come up here and I make a loop. See? I'll come over the top and I'll go through that loop. And this time I'm just going to pinch it in half. I'm going to pull it up and I'll bring it up so it bites onto these other three I made up here. This is a taut line hitch. Now I grab it. Here is my baseline that's coming from the tarp going down there. Here's the loop coming back. I'm going to grab it here, grab that knot, and pull in opposite directions. And that holds tension. That constrictor is holding it tightly. Now, like I said, in an emergency, I jump and I realize, uh-oh, I'm about to lose it. I can grab it and jerk, and it'll slide, see? I can also, it will give a little bit by itself. As the storms are hitting and these ropes are snatching everything, it will give a little. It'll just grow tighter, but as this cord compacts, as it gets wet, it will slack just a little, and that's a good thing because it's raining hard. My tarp's got to bow in a little bit, right? Now, it's already tied, and I come by and I realize it's a little slack because it rained last night. All I got to do is just grab that knot and pull, and that's it. I'm back to tie it. If I want to slack it just a little, I can just grab the knot and scoot it down a little bit and reduce tension, or I can grab the knot and grab the baseline and pull it a little bit tighter. So that taut line is always going to hold the tension. This is a tension-holding knot. And all you got to do to get rid of it is pull that and get it out of there. That's all you got to do. See, all it is is a series of loops at that point. Because we keep looping, just like in the jam knot, the first loop I put up there to the second loop, the cord comes between them, and they're pinching side to side. The next one comes up, and it's pinching. So there's two cords pinching, kind of like a jam knot, but there's no knot, so it's just pinching the cord. And then that big last loop going back here against the grain between the two halves locks it. If I don't go and do that and lock it like that, come in here, these can work loose on their own of the wind and everything since it's just you know half hitch just pulled up it'll hold some but it may work loose by putting that big loop in just like that and pulling it tight that way i kind of bind that knot and lock it in place and so that is the taut line hitch okay now how to anchor the line to something. We will cover that in the next one. There is clove hitch, there is timber hitch, there is several different hitches, and I will cover them in part two because that's where you're anchoring to a stationary object, the lark's head. I'm going through a grommet, and that's kind of like how do I hook the rope? I've just showed you how to tie it to secure something. I've showed you how to do a Canadian jam knot, which is going to handle 90% of your cinch it and hold it jobs. I've now showed you how to create a taut line, and that's going to handle the bulk of your 
um, guidelines and things. But now, this is the last knot we're going to talk about, and it is a trucker's hitch. This is where I need a lot of mechanical advantage because I'm creating a ridge line. Now, this taut line is, in essence, a sort of a ridge line type deal because the way I got set up. Usually, like I said, this would be going from a stake to a tarp at an angle downhill. But when I'm going to put up between two trees and I'm going to put my tarp over it, it has to be really tight. Otherwise, it's going to sag. See? I have to kind of like pull the trees together just to grunt so they don't do that so much. And so that's where a trucker's hitch. A trucker's hitch gets its name because in setting up tarps and loads on 18-wheeler trailers, you had to be able to hook ropes and things and pull them down tight so as that two-ton thing sitting there going down the road and you know the road shaking and everything it's got to hold and lock and not slack up take the load and not give because if it starts giving with the roads oscillating back and forth eventually the load will fall off the trailer or work in some way so it's a way of locking things down to be very secure and to give you a lot more mechanical advantage than what your actual arm strength is we're going to double or triple our power by going to a trucker's hitch so let me show you that right quick Okay, here is the trucker's hitch. I've got something anchored between two points, and I want to pull this line blood tight. Well, here's how I'm going to do it. Uh, let me adjust the camera up close, and I'm going to show you. Okay, here's my line that I've tied to that tree. I've come up here and gone around this tree, and I've come out to here. What I'm going to do is take that line, and I'm going to do like that and make a loop. See how I turn that loop around? Now I'm going to take that loop, Turn it all the way around, and I want to roll the loop in the direction of the tree I'm, you know, it's all downhill, that's uphill. So that's when I started tied, it's already tied too tight, and this is the one on this end. So I aim downhill, and I push a loop up from the inside, just like that, and pull it. You see that forms a loop. Now coming from the other end, I'm going to take that end, and I'm going to go through that loop right there. Now what this is going to do is it's going to give me a lot of mechanical advantage. Okay. Now I now take this line and I pull it back uphill. So I snug it up good and snug and that takes up the excess of that loop. Now I have reverse direction and I go back toward the back and I pull it really tight. I mean, I can pull two trees over with it. And because of that, that knot now constricts down really tight. Now, I get one line below it. Remember that half hitch? Form a loop. Come underneath, stick the line up through that loop, pull it up against it, and pull it snug. That is a trucker's hitch. That is locked. And that will hold that tension, but it's very easy to get out. All I have to do is pull this line and spread these two bars apart and it'll come undone just like that. Let me show you that one more time. I made my loop. I went through my loop. Now where the line is solid on that side, it's coming, goes around the tree. Now I got the two lines. I go through that loop. Now I'm going to pull this and I'm going to pull it that away. And that will pull this knot up really tight. Now I reverse direction and go back this way. And now when I pull that sucker, it's going to bite down. When I get it as tight as I want where I want it, now I come up here and I'm going to push the loop up. Pull the loop down tight against it, and that is locked. That is a trucker's hitch. So, to recap, a trucker's hitch is my ridge line hitch. I tie it securely on this end, I go over here, go around that tree, come up, create my loop, go through that loop, take the line and pull it tight, then reverse direction and pull it as tight as I want, make the half hitch and lock it. Now it's secure and it will be a solid ridge line that's going to be doing doing nice and tight. No matter what the weather does, that ridge line is going to be tight. So now I ain't got to pull my tarp so tight. I run a ridge line rather than tying the tarp. Because if I pull the tarp, I'm stressing a tarp. Now my tarp can go over that line and just be anchored to it as opposed to the tarp itself pulling. 
I wear out tarps that way. So I want a solid ridge line. Next, my guy lines going from that tarp to the ground is going to be that taut hitch. I'm going to hook to the guy line of the tarp. I'm going to go to a stake, come back up, pull it snug, and do my three loops with the one going back through and pull it tight. That's my taut line hitch. Now that's got my guy lines that hold my tarp out or in place or my tent up in place. Next, the Canadian jam knot will handle about all my jobs of me going up and lashing something to a tree or lashing gear together to hold together and stay there until I say otherwise. The Canadian jam knot does a very good job of that. Lastly, the square knot. The square knot is just a down and dirty, real quick knot where I want to close this up, but I'm going to open it back up fairly quickly. I need a knot I can create and release with very little fuss without having to spend fiddly trying to undo it. You just yank it backwards, it unlocks, and I can take it off quickly. So the square knot is going to be used where I'm making a knot to put on a piece of gear that I'm not going to maybe untie it for a little bit, like a Let's say I'm going to make a loop and make that loop to go on my belt to be where I can hang something in that loop, okay? So therefore, it becomes a kind of like a soft shackle like we talked about before. Or I'm securing gear with it where I will be able to untie it, but I want a knot that's going to hold solidly. And then, of course, the knot you already know, which is the bow knot. can be used for a general purpose. Just hold it together. It's not going to be load-bearing or anything, but... I need to hold this bag closed, or I need to gather up this bundle and just hold it for a minute while I'm doing whatever. A simple little bow knot works very good. With those five, you can do probably 80% of what you're going to need to do in bushcraft witchcraft. Now in part two of this, of the knots, that's when we're going to go into all the anchoring knots. That's going to be the clove hitch and things like that where how do I tie this rope to a tree and it stays secure, but me be able to get it back without it being a big hassle. How do I tie this to whatever and it ain't gonna come loose and I can do it quickly and easily and again, it doesn't gonna give me trouble. I need to put something in the middle of this line right here to make a, a handhold or a pull or I need to hang gear in the middle of this rope. It'd be great right here. I will cover all of that because those are a little more specially, those are anchoring knots. I need to anchor something right here, or I need to create an anchor right here. That will be in part two. Hope you enjoy this uh, video, guys, and I hope that these knots are helpful to you. Please leave any questions or comments below, and do me a favor, hit the like, share, and subscribe button before you go. Till next time, I'm Blackie, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.